But what do you think? So I don't. You know, do you think it's like what a good cop is? A cop will shoot the bad cop for shooting an innocent civilian. That's what a good cop is to me. What's your definition of a good cop? As someone that is serving and protecting. How do you serve and protect? Yeah, the black people yeah. never trust the cop. You go this to a disturbance anyway. when you get called. Yeah. You don't just walk up on some shit. And you this is the thing, Steve. You, you said half black. To make a big black no. black, most and black people I knew didn't trust the police villain. anyway, so now they acting shocked. Like, this is what you, I mean, I, and what you're saying is a good statement, but this is just like this, like police brutality, fuck it. Why don't black brutality have been happening since we got here? Thing is, everybody haven't been here since we got here. If you was just born in 1982, you would think ignorantly that the sun just was born when you was born. You wouldn't know that the sun being here. It takes for somebody to educate you or tell you, no, nah, man, the sun been here since the creation of the world. You just got here. So you get these young kids, they be thinking like, this shit must just start happening. I'm just not seeing on TV. You tell them, no, you have to educate. It's been going on. And that's what the thing is. It's a lack of education. And that's, and like I said, when you go back to the root of the problem, the root of the problem is always education. Self worth and self uh, value. Who the fuck thinks there's no son before they were born? Because your parents had to see the son. And the, their parents the, had to see the son. The thing about it is fucking the ability to understand a motherfucking analogy. <laughs> That's what the fuck that was about. That wasn't even about a literal son. That's just the ability of making a point and shit. And somebody... You didn't make a good point. Because you fucking slow. <laughs> there ain't no good points to you, goddammit. I need to break it down with fucking uh, C. Else. John Jump. Something else. I got you a Dr. Seuss book on life and shit for you to even comprehend green eggs and ham. But like I was saying, I like it all rooted in education. You have to go back and you have to tell... Like, you got to tell these motherfuckers, we been getting fucked up. And then things like that. So, like I said, I'll go to um, education. You better go to this quick break, man. Pause for the calls, as they say. Uh, Why these niggas pull their balls? Pay a couple bills. I'm okay. Can you pick him? Uh, things of that nature. Cops are on your ass, man. You know, they really degrade you. White folks don't believe that shit. Don't believe cops degrade. Oh, come on. Those beatings, those people are resisting arrest. <laughs> I'm tired of this harassment of police officers. Cause the police live in your neighborhood, see? And you be known them as Officer Timpson. Hello, Officer Timpson, going bowling tonight? <laughs> yes, uh, nice pinto you have. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas don't know them like that. See, white folks get a ticket, they pull over. Hey, Officer, yes, glad to be of help. Here you go. <laughs> Nigga got to be talking about, I am reaching into my pocket for my license. <laughs> Cause I don't want to be no motherfucking accident. <laughs> Police degrade. I don't know. You know, it's often you wonder why a nigga don't go completely mad. You know, you do. You get your shit together. You work all week, right? And then you get dressed. You make, may say, can't make $125. We get $80 if he lucky. Right, and he go out, get clean, be driving with his old lady, going out to a club, and police pull over. Get out of the car! That was a robbery! A nigga looks just like you! All right, put your hands up, take your pants down, spread your cheeks. Now, what nigga feel like having fun after that? <laughs> no, let's just go home, baby. You go home, beat your kids and shit. You gonna take that shit out on somebody. Break. Uh, like I said, like uh, both said, this shit been going on. It's evident in the Malcolm X speeches I played at the beginning, and even in that, from a, a comical standpoint, Richard Pryor, you would think that these people were ahead of their time, but they was just a product of their times. And the racism that's involved with law enforcement, it, it's it's not even fucking being hit. It's like it's still at the forefront. And what's even more sickening is Richard Pryor and Malcolm X were talking at a time where we didn't have um, the social media or uh, the, the, the advancements in technology where you can, like, as soon as the shit happens, you see it. And that's, like, the most disturbing thing is how we can see this in publicly. And, and these, these cops get put on some form of uh, administrative leave. 
And it's like a slap in the face of like, fuck y'all. That's it's like a big fuck y'all. So then like I asked uh Bryce before he left, what was his emotion towards seeing those videos? I don't wanna ask you the same thing, but what was the first thing you thought when you seen let's talk about the uh the Alton murder first when he was being hemmed up by the police when he what what would you what do you think when you saw that? When I first seen it. First thing that came to my mind, when I first seen it, the caption, it was like them, they at it again, and somebody asked, Do I think they will get off? That was that was the caption on the and I was like, damn, that's fucked up. It's like, only thing I will say about that, like, it's fucked up. He shouldn't have got shot. I'm just, I was shitty that the uh, the lady filming dropped the camera because all you can hear was, um, like he was on the ground when they shot him. And all you hear is, um, you hear the, the gunshots and you hear, stay on the ground. But it's, you know, it's, you can't see it. And I'm like, damn, did he get up or what? And I'm like, damn, these motherfuckers about to get off again. That's the first thing that came to my mind because it's like, damn. Like, do I, this is a black man, because I know you personally, you know me personally. You know a situation shit where we can let our uh, tempers get the best of us. And, I, like, I don't know, like, I was talking to um, somebody earlier this week. We was talking about one time we, um, shout out to Mari, he was talking about one time we got pulled over by the police, and he just, for no reason, got hopped out the car with his guns drawn. And the shit was scary. And it's like I've been pulled over, pulled out the car, handcuffed, and this shit that white people don't go through. So that's another why, reason why they can identify with this because they don't. It's like we treat it like criminals before they even got our license and registration. Right. Like they have it in their mind, they already have us like pegged as this motherfucking savage. So seeing him on the ground and he was about our age, do you do that? But strike a fear in you, like damn, that could that could be me. Like I could be next. Honestly, no. I'm gonna be honest, no. And the reason I say that is because I'm not. It's been happening. It, it, I mean, I, I mean, and don't 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 get me wrong. Any just any situation. Don't get me wrong. So like, if you get pulled over, we get you. I'll get say you. this. Now I will say this. When I get pulled over, I think that. But when okay, I I'm, I'm not talking about just sitting. Watch. I'm talking about if you're in a situation where you get approached by the police. In a situation where I get approached by the police, yes, I think that. But when you I watched it in Florida, I ain't scared of snowballs. When I, when I watched it, but the reason I feel like that because. I don't carry no gun. I'm not, you know, I'm not out here with no gun and nothing like that. So, like, damn, I can get shot for not having nothing on me. Do you think that he, he like, they when they approached you, you didn't think they knew he had a gun? When they tackled him, do you think they knew he had a gun? I'm going to say, from from reading what I read, I'm going to say, yes, that's only because they came out there because they said somebody had a gun. I'm just going off of what I read. So, I, I mean, take that for what it's worth, if that makes any sense. All right. Even even when you take a gun out of the equation, you you know that there, there have been cases where black people got killed without guns. Right. Even even right. like turned around with their back. To right. Them. Yeah. So uh, even let's, we can take weapons or even a physical threat out of the equation, and we've known that blacks have been getting killed, man or woman, where they choke you out, shoot you, or beat you to death. So when you like this is me when I'm approached by the police, I'm thinking this shit can go down. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just asking, do that fear? Like that adrenaline, like yeah. So, uh, damn, that's fucked up, ain't it? Yeah, I had it last week when I got pulled over. Ain't like you just like it's just a feeling that this shit can go down. Right. And when you around just typical black people, when you go to the ring, he goes to the ring every Sunday. Do you be thinking, damn, it can go down? I think about that too. When I get around certain ones, okay, I was just talking about blacks as a whole. No, okay. Well, one thing you said, man, that just stood out was like I just understand how they dropped the camera. Like I wish they had just filmed the whole thing, but. No, the reason I say that is because it it helped. I, I, I honestly believe they're going to get off because of that. That's my opinion. But it was it was it shifted away, and, and you know what they're going to shift it back to right, and, and they showed the cop on the ground like and, 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 still and, I'm, and I'm, they're going to say we didn't see it. But we all know that shit happens. Well, no, and, 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 and I'm saying I'm not hold on, hold on, hold on, and I'm not and I'm not saying so. There's I'm not saying me. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that we done seen footage before and they done got off. I'm saying that's what they're gonna say. 
They're gonna so say you didn't her. see you didn't see the actual shoot. That's what they're gonna he was say. No threat. His arms were both pinned down. No, I understand what you said. She's, what everything she's about. saying is valid, but I'm, I'm coming yeah. from I'm coming from the perspective when they go to court, they're gonna say we didn't see it. He was moving. They was already uh, wrestling with him, and then with them saying he got a gun, they're gonna justify it. They're gonna justify it by them just saying he had a gun. And, and that's the sad that's part. That's very of, sad because you didn't actually you didn't actually see the shooting. We didn't see the gun. We didn't see the gun. You're right, but we they, saw him, we, we the saw him subdued pocket. though, didn't we? Yeah, but you didn't see that, and then they're going to say, "Well, he had a gun, Deep and, down he, and, in his and, and he was moved." Because I watched, he didn't even I watched, reach for I watched gun. the video over and over and over again. His one, his his left arm was pinned. The other cop had his right arm. The other cop had his arm controlled. And his arm was moving a little bit, and they're gonna say he was reading for a gun. Like and if, if you think, watch the video again. The cop was moving his arm, and that's when he said, "Oh, he got a gun." They could have just kept tasing him, cause they had they had already tased him. They could have kept tasing him. Your kids for uh, four and five, uh, little Stephen be five in September. All right. Yep. How important do you think it is to educate? Your kids about like I was gonna say just like police brutality. That's all I was gonna say. But I'll say that you can't just go to the end. You gotta go to the beginning, to the genesis. So if you, were, how important do you feel it is to educate your kids about having pride in themselves? Because it, it stems from having. So we, when children grow up with pride, you don't. Value things, you value people, and what I mean by that is like majority of crime in the um, black community is all uh, centered around finances. Would you agree? Yep. So when you when you use a finance or a dollar, so to speak, for what it's primarily for, which is to survive, eat. Uh, have a room and board when you at the the basis, and then anything else is a given. Like when you don't teach them to strive for materialistic things or value things, do you think that at least they don't value themselves and their people more? Oh, say that again. Like when you don't teach them to value items, materialistic things, do you think like if we was to raise our children to value themselves? Instead of items, cars, jewelry, people clothes, do. shoes, I'm talking about as a whole. I'm talking about people as a whole, like where you can protect them. People do do it, but I'm saying where you can keep them focused on that instead of because what it it becomes, it becomes a competition about nothing. So you start fighting and killing over nothing, and people, and it, it is like that's where it's always in the core. It's always in the upbringing. And it's not. Uh, individual upbringing. It's like the the whole, like when we talk about black, black people coming together, it's not about marching. It's not even about, about killing them. It's about the healing within the community. Which goes to like, when you say leaders, the parents are the leaders. We don't have to wait for Malcolm X to walk through the door. We don't have to wait for Martin Luther King to walk through the door. We don't have to look for a new uh, Obama. You govern your own family. And then, as, as a community, you come together, and the strongest ones, they lead everybody. So what you do, and this is part of the solution, what you do is you educate, and then you treat everybody like they're the sons. Man, you friends. So if I see your kids do something, I can speak to them. You know what I'm saying? If I see your sons, I educate them. I educate them like it's black men. We didn't got so weak. We as black men are leaders. We the leaders of the black community. If I'm just if I'm if I see a child walking down the street and he doing wrong, it's up to me to correct him. It's not for me to be fearful of what somebody else is gonna say. It's about me being a man and stepping in in that situation and talking to him. Like if I see a kid, uh, it's nothing for me to have a conversation with a little boy. Like I see a little boy at the Y, I sit down, talk, like, what you doing? Look at these girls. But he look at me, he laugh because it's like that comfort feeling that somebody care enough just to sit down and talk. If you're around black boys all day, every day, in any situation, whether you uh, you mess with their mama, they your kids, it's on you 
to steer that child in the right direction. If you, if you, if a child grows up and becomes a fucked up person and you watch them grow up and you didn't intervene at some point, you as a man have to take ownership in some part.